alongside steps that have already been taken, such as the streamlining of required documents and the introduction of a trusted employer scheme, we will do much, much more. This includes critically the finalization of the points-based system for work visas, rolling out the remote working and startup visas, updating the critical skills list more regularly, and making it easier for more tourists from around the world to visit our beautiful country and spend their valuable foreign currency right here in South Africa. However, in order for us to be effective in unlocking scarce skills and growing tourism to create jobs, Home Affairs must urgently clear the backlog in the processing of permits. The department has set up a dedicated team to reduce the backlog. I am pleased to report that we are starting to see progress. Our dedicated team has already reduced the backlog by processing 96,000 applications out of a total of 306,000. Yeah, the new minister there uh, of Home Affairs, just giving us a sense of how then uh, important and pivotal this Department of Home Affairs becomes, uh, looking at, uh, you know, the issues of the inflows in and out of the country, looking at issues of skills, issues of tourism and the likes, but also saying that it, it's all about the dignity. It's all about belonging. When you look at uh, how then they are there when you are born and they are there, the last ones, when you are no no more and you hear him repeating and talking about this issue of the increasing of the availability of uh, these work visas the updating of scar skills this is particularly what got him uh, really out of favor with a lot of people saying that the economic freedom fighters have been calling and have been talking about uh, this particular issue of ensuring that we make it easier then uh, for people to come into the country and work uh, but they were criticized and even losing favor somewhat when we were going to the elections. But you hear the minister talking about it now and we look at how then strategic this department becomes in also clamping down on, on across national uh, transitional uh, crimes, but also looking at the issues of illegal immigration and clamping down on that as well. We're on 861 What would be your expectations from the Minister of Home Affairs in navigating this particular department but our international relations commentator here is Ngabuto Mabena who's on standby ready to go with us where this is concerned thereby X going at on at Power FM 987 at Katlero Lorodi underscore Ngabuto good morning welcome to the show uh, morning to you and morning to the listeners thank you so much yeah, thank you very much for giving us your time. I mean, really, when you look at it, uh, the Home Affairs Department becomes very important in terms of ensuring that there is an issue of control around uh, migration. There is the issue of uh, knowing who is in the country, the numbers, and ensuring that at least then that fits into the budgets of how then you roll out services, looking at the number of those people uh, that are accommodated, looking at uh, what is there on the census or what is there on the list in terms of the body count of those that are in the country. There's a sheriff in town in the country right now We're under the government of national unity and you had him there in Mabuto. He seems to have an idea of how then things are expected to fare where his tenure is concerned. Already being criticized by some uh, but it looks like he uh, somewhat wants to ensure that he positions uh, this particular department for the better. We welcome his statement, particularly when he speaks of reducing backlog of uh, visas. Uh, he has said that uh, since he took over, they've uh, attended to about 30% of those visas that uh-huh. are outstanding. There is a huge uh, uh, backlog. You will know that uh, many people end up being uh, considered to be undesirable or illegal because uh, they will have applied to renew their visas and it takes time. For instance, you also have holders of the Zimbabwe exemption permits who have applied for waivers, some as early as 2022. Uh, they are yet to receive their outcome, whether the, uh, their application was successful or not, they are still waiting. So we hope that uh, they are going to clear the backlog. We also have the backlog uh, within the Aslam Sika uh, uh, system, where people are applying for Aslam. Others who are now uh, have a refugee status, 
who also beg to uh, get their refugee passports. So we hope that uh, indeed they are going to attend to that. But uh, our view uh, is that um, uh, while we understand, uh, because the minister spent time uh, uh, talking about belonging, defining who is a South African in terms of the constitution and the critical role that the Department of Home Affairs plays in ensuring that every South African is documented, we are also of the view that uh, every person that is in South Africa is documented. We need to know, uh, the government needs to know who is in the Republic. Uh, but then the issue is uh, around the question of um, qualification how does one qualify for a visa uh, the white paper uh-huh. which was presented by the former minister of home affairs does not necessarily address it. that would have preferred a situation where we review or government reviews the white paper is gazetted in 2017 which recognized that uh, you have people of law skill that uh, work in south africa uh, who are undocumented and uh, you need to document such individuals yeah, I mean, also then uh, there was that issue as well as to those skills. Uh, you, know, you know, if we are talking about those people that are here, they're working on those skills and they need to be documented. We need to then balance it with the, whether that skill is a critical skill at the moment in the country and how then we balance it with the issue of job creation because then that becomes a hot potato in terms of then uh, how you hear this department often being accused of being in the center of uh, not protecting uh, the jobs then or the skills here hence you hear the minister saying there is a need as well to constantly update uh, the discuss skills list because then it can't be a free for all indeed but but the the, the reality of the matter is Uh. that uh, our economies (laughs) within the uh, southern region are interlinked uh, uh, it, it's a reality that uh, there's a lot of uh, cross-border trade that happens between the uh, neighboring countries within the Sadak region. It's a reality that under apartheid regime and under colonialism, you had uh, uh, people from various countries in Malawi, in Mozambique, in, in Zimbabwe coming to work in the mines, on the farms, and uh, this still continues because of, of course, of uh, our educational system, which is different from uh, the educational system that the people in New Zealand, in, in Australia get. These are the people that qualify and under these skills that the minister speaks to. This, this is what prompted the Department of Home Affairs in 2015 to say the white paper is, is gazetted in 1999 was not a pan-African outlook because uh, uh, it did not recognize that uh, you have Africans within the SATAC region that flock to South Africa mm-hmm. who are people of low skill, who are professionals, but who are Skills are not under critical skills list. For instance, you talk of lawyers, uh, you talk of journalists, you talk of other professionals, you uh-huh. talk of business mechanics that uh, uh, work in South Africa. But while we understand uh, that you also need to protect uh, the jobs for South Africans, but we also have to deal with the reality that, that you have an influx. And the question is, how then do you manage this migration? Uh, to an extent that you end up having migrant workers being abused, being exploited uh, by South African capital because they are now being employed uh, uh, um, uh, without documents and they are being exploited. They cannot join trade unions. So these are the reality. And we think that the white paper is gazetted in 2017 once trying to play this balancing act to say you protect the South African uh, 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 workers from not losing their jobs, but at the same time, you address the issue of of migrants that are coming in South Africa to an extent uh-huh. that they are not being abused because uh, with the experience of the Walters of the Zimbabwe exemption permit, Lesotho exemption permit, once people are documented, they are able to take their forces uh, to the CCMA, to labor court and so forth and it demanded to be paid a minimum wage. But the majority of undocumented who work on the farms, who work in other sectors of the economy, cannot join join trade unions and hence the exploitation that that we see by by the bosses on a daily basis. Yeah, hence a lot of people then would say that the gaps in those exploitations would be 
around the fact that most of those people are not documented. Most of them would have maybe found themselves in the country illegally. And how do you then accept the, uh, uh, the expect the the government to protect such an individual that is an illegal uh, person that is basically a criminal uh, because you're not recognized, you're not uh, in any way documented in a way uh, that it would prove that you found your way in the country legally. Hence, you hear members of parliament even then saying to uh, the new minister here uh, that how are we going to ensure that this strategy that you're presenting here, this white paper that they're talking about, that they're looking at how uh, then we solidify it, we transform it uh, to say that really these concessions for foreign nationals need to align with government strategy on reducing unemployment in the country and of protecting job opportunities for South Africans. This was an, a, a coming through from a member of parliament, Vuyo Zungula, who was saying that as much as we see you saying that you're opening and you're looking at, uh, you know, updating and looking at the skill set and saying that there's a greater need around relaxing the work visa opportunities, you need to ensure then that there is that balance. Because as we speak right now, we can't turn a blind eye to the fact that the immediate crisis in South Africa right now is that of unemployment and the immediate then gripe or the friction then comes through with then uh, the danger lies in seeing locals and foreign nationals squaring off because of some of these gaps that are coming from home affairs that do not in any way then balance matters that would ensure that as much as we see the protection of job opportunities South Africans are prioritized here. It 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 it, requ- it, it requires a, a a holistic approach from the SADAC region. Mm-hmm. We are going to have a summit, SADAC summit, uh, in Arare uh, uh, in in few weeks' time. And uh, the question is, uh, how does SADAC deal with the industrialization of member states to an extent that you do mm-hmm. not have migration down south? Because indeed. You have, you have a, a, an unemployment crisis in South Africa. It's a reality which you cannot detain. You have the same crisis, uh, which is more than the South African crisis in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, and, and in other countries. And uh, the reality uh, and the experience is that uh, these uh, young people who find themselves, because they are coming from countries that there's instability and so forth, then, then flock to South Africa, as you are rightly pointing out, that they then compete with the local South Africans for uh, uh, resources which then lead to uh, attacks. So while we understand the position of of, uh, the the Minister of Home Affairs, uh, but it is important to begin to say, at the head of state summit level in the SATAC region, Mm. how do you deal with the question of industrialization? Because it cannot be correct that uh, migration is down south. So we need a rethink. We need to relook into the entire sector region in terms of its economic development, its economic industrialization, so that jobs are created uh, across the region, not only in South Africa, because uh, South Africa will keep on doing uh, in terms of trying to manage its borders, uh, try, try, trying to safeguard the jobs against the exploited uh, uh, migrant labor uh, who are working in South Africa. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, in the last 30 years, it has not worked out. Uh, th- this is why it is critical that the debate should then get to uh, the SATAC region to say, how do you accept an anti- a-, a disputed election in Zimbabwe, uh, 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 which results uh, in, uh, in, in failure to resolve the economic crisis? Because in a disputed election in Zimbabwe, in the last 20 years, this is what it, it has led to. Right. Uh, the neoliberal policies that we have adopted in Zimbabwe has led to the economic crisis uh, that, 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 that we have. Yes, uh, uh, South Africa complains of the polarized borders uh, where people come undocumented, but we also complain in Zimbabwe that uh, 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 the political elite through their runners are smacking minerals to South Africa, which en route to Dubai, uh, you'll, you'll recall uh, uh, the, 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 the cousin to Mnangagwa who was arrested for smoking gold, uh, I think it was 6 kg or so, but he, uh, he was never detained. 
So this is a crisis uh, that, that we have uh, within the Sadak region that, that must be dealt with. The other point, of course, you do have, because people will come, let Ali, someone is married to a South African, the visa says you cannot take up employment, they end up taking up employment. Uh, because it's part of the visa will be clear that you cannot talk up, uh, take up employment. Uh, the visitor's visa is clear that you cannot take up employment, but people end up taking up employment. So it's a crisis that we find ourselves in, and that uh, this crisis cannot be resolved by South Africa. It requires a collective uh. effort from the South region. Yeah, just a reminder to our listeners at home that we in conversation this morning. Uh, we're talking to Ngabuto Mabena. He's an international relations commentator looking at the Department of Home Affairs and how then they're positioning themselves under the new guard of Minister Leon Schreiber. And we've already seen him speak there in Parliament to play you uh, that bite there where he was talking about uh, the plans of uh, this department, uh, but also just looking at ensuring that, uh, you know, he gives us clarity in terms of the marching order, this white paper uh, that has been spoken about, uh, looking at immigration policies and issues of visas and the likes, and how then they're working to uh, re- reduce and deal with affected backlogs here experienced in uh, the department. So you're welcome to really form part of this conversation on 0861 uh, there by X going by at Power FM 987 at Katlero Lorodi underscore. So uh, Ngabuto, it then speaks to uh, the issue of uh, uh, the uh, departments then being able to work to and speak to each other in a way that would see progress where this is concerned. Because when you're talking about issues of SADC and how then things are flowing then uh, from there, the first thing that comes to mind is the Department of International Relations and Corporations uh, that would have then uh, some what of bilaterals and would conduct uh, some uh, of these developments Developments in terms of our relationships with other countries on the continent and how then things tend to move here. But you often then hear people saying that South Africa controlled the burden then of Africa in terms of accommodating and taking in everyone. Hence, uh, the issue of the updating of this skills list becomes important as to addressing uh, some of those frictions to say, but why do we have uh, an S that is someone that is a foreign national when we have nurses that are sitting at home that are locals and how do you balance it in a way, in a way that you ensure that there is a delivery of services that are not uh, hampered here so this would mean that those bilateral relations between these countries uh, would have to come through here in terms of also them being honest about some of their challenges uh, that would see South Africa uh, bearing uh, the shoulder and the responsibility of economically then taking uh, some of these people in when South Africa itself is limping where the economy is concerned. It 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 also speaks to party to party relationships. Mm. Uh, uh, the alliance between the African National Congress and ZANU-PF who benefited from that. Because uh, to us, it doesn't make political and economic sense for the African National Congress to continue to be in a relationship with the ZANU-PF when it is clear that the issue in Zimbabwe is the wrong economic policies It is corruption that has destroyed the economy, and the ANC is seen as protecting ZANU-PF. If you speak to any ordinary Zimbabwean, they will tell you that it has been the Uh. ANC that that has been defending ZANU-PF, shielding ZANU-PF when it rigs elections, state-sponsored violence against the opposition. As we speak now, you have opposition members that, that have been arrested, have been uh, in prison for some days. Uh, 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 yesterday, there were other people in Harare that were arrested. Uh, members of uh, um, the Republic Party in Bulawayo have been arrested. There's a crackdown on opposition activists ahead of this uh, summit because there is fear that uh, there are going to be demonstrations organized by Zimbabweans. So ordinary Zimbabweans generally see the ANC as protecting ZANU-PF. So uh, while the departments, as we are saying, that they need to speak to each other, the ANC must be clear and say, yes, we have a relationship with ZANU-PF, and they explain the benefits of this relationship because uh, it, 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 it is true that uh, this relationship does not benefit the ANC. It actually brings 
problems to the South African people. It brings problems to the South African government. This is why you now have to deal with the issue of unskilled Zimbabweans that are in South Africa. Uh, uh, for the last for the last thirty years, deportation has not been the answer. Under Minister Butele, the, the deportations were happening. But you leave someone at the Bedbridge Porter Post, people come back. He, he understood so it, uh, he was probably one of the most radical home affairs ministers or police minister arresting migrants. But as we deport them to Bedbridge, they will be back. This is why under uh, uh, Honourable uh, uh, Kosaza Nazuma, they said, "No, wait a minute. Let's review." and a grand special permit to Zimbabweans to see how we can manage migration. And under the leadership of, of then Minister Kikaba said, let's accept that there are people of low skill that are within the region, hence the special permit to Zimbabweans and the people of Lesotho. But that, of course, has a political implication to the African National Congress, hence it's, it's called less votes uh, because unemployment in South Africa is rising. So how do you balance the issue of giving solidarity to ZANU-PF and also protecting uh, jobs so that undocumented migrants do work? So this is why we are saying the relationship between the ANC yeah. and the ZANU-PF is not beneficiary to South Africa. It is time that the ANC needs to revisit uh, this political uh, uh, yeah. uh, relationship. Yeah, I mean, we saw Minister Mutsualedi, the previous Minister of Home Affairs, saying this particular ZEP and where we find ourselves, uh, those decisions taken by his previous uh, ministers that came in home of, into Home Affairs were unsustainable. Hence, he spent most of his tenure here uh, trying to correct some of those gaps that led us to where we are right now with people that can't be accounted for. And you hear them then saying that they came through using the very same visas, they want waivers, and you find that... The don't even have documents that would balance and justify why they should remain in the country and get those waivers. The deportation process would have to be better coordinated and the borders would have to be sealed in a way that then as we work around SADC and we work around uh, balancing things out and this white paper uh, we put and ensure uh, that there are those the you know the updating of those skills list and you tend to then ensure and assure South Africans that you have their back when it comes to the protection of job opportunities for locals as to compare to uh, migrants that would be wanting to uh, come into South Africa for those opportunities but also uh, before we let you go uh, Ngabuto how do you see uh, basically uh, these uh, next five years uh, working out you've mentioned the relationship between ZANU-PF and and the ANC, the ANC is no longer in government in South Africa as we speak right now. We have the government of national unity, meaning that it too would want to chart its own way forward. And we can't then uh, in any way keep relying on the relationship between ZANU-PF and the ANC in talking about those gaps. We have this GNU now. How are you expecting it to fare? Well, 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 well uh, the, the GNU uh, uh, in the context of, of migration, mm-hmm. uh, as, as, as we have said we hope that uh, it will recognize that uh, you have professionals uh, who are in South Africa, but whose professions are not listed under critical skills. Uh, we have been contributing to the South African economy. You have business people who, under ordinary circumstances or in terms of the requirements, would not qualify for a business visa, but they are running businesses in, in South Africa. Uh, they, they have been contributing uh, to the South African economy. So there they needs to be a revisit uh, mm-hmm. on this question of uh, migrants that are in South Africa. What are their skills? Uh, uh, what what contribution are they making to to the South African economy? We think it 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 is critical, uh, um, and 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 of course you then have uh, the Zimbabwean government that then sees the presence of Zimbabweans in South Africa as a way of making money. They come here, they begin to charge. Zimbabweans uh, say apply for your e passport, Zimbabwean e passport. We are going to charge you 250 US dollars so that you regularize your stay. They have no clue that a passport itself does not qualify anyone to be legal in the country because even if you acquire a passport in Zimbabwe, when you come to South Africa, you are given, say, two weeks to be in South Africa. For you to stay longer, you need to apply for a permit of, of which you apply under. So instead of addressing 
the critical challenges, the push factors that has uh, pushed the Zimbabweans outside the Zimbabwe to South Africa. Then the Zimbabwean government jumps to South Africa and says, please regularize your stay in South Africa. We're giving you an opportunity to apply for a passport, which is 250 US dollars. The aim is to make the working people migrant workers from Zimbabwe. So this is why it is critical that the Zimbabwean government must be honest with the Zimbabwean government. That uh, yeah. uh, uh, your crisis is becoming our crisis and uh, we cannot take it any longer. You need... Uh, to rebuild your economy. But unfortunately, at the receiving end are the victims who are going to be bundled in police mm. events thrown to bed bridge. The political elite continues uh, to smack minerals, continues to, to milk the poor people of Zimbabwe. And yeah. that's, that's the biggest uh, pain we have. Huh. Yeah, no, this, that, that would have, would be something that, uh, would, yeah, be a, a, just a cause for concern if it then plays out in that way. But there is a need then uh, to really then relook, check and ensure uh, that everything else uh, flows and works uh, according to the confines of uh, the law. Mabuto is going to be a long five years and I suspect that we'll be coming back to talk about uh, some of these issues as we go into the year. But we really appreciate you coming on this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good morning. Awesome. Mabuto Mabena uh, coming through there as an international relations commentator and helping us understand then the role of the Department of Home Affairs as we go into these coming five years, flowing, of course, uh, from what we had from the Minister of Home Affairs, Leon Schreiber, and the plans that lie ahead where this department is concerned. Not an easy one uh, to navigate. And I said often you would find uh, the previous minister, Dr. Aaron Maswaledi, in court uh, because of these uh, particular issues, the butting of heads, uh, the frictions around migration and immigration, and how then we actually ensure that we get back to basics and get the database, clear database of who's here, who's not, and how then the Zimbabwean exemption permits, there's also the Lesotho exemption permits, how those tend to work in terms of issues of waivers and the likes. But the minister saying they are working to ensure that they address as well issues of these backlogs where they've been experienced within the department uh, saying that that would go a long way in helping applicants that have been suffering an injustice here not getting joy from the department of home affairs it's five years it's going to be an interesting uh, five years let's wait and see i want us to break a bit when we come back we have lisiba tubakhali who's on standby as we speak right now as this national spokesperson of the south african uh, policing union here to speak to us about these concerns the job scams uh, that uh, we hear have been picked up and they are becoming more of a frequent here within the South African uh, police service and we try to get to the bottom of what is happening here and how then do we see SAPU pushing to raise awareness in trying to protect those that fi- may find themselves vulnerable because like we said within Labuto there that there is a crisis of unemployment in South Africa right now and when you see these job scams they don't then tend to make the lives of ordinary South Africans easier, those uh, that would be vulnerable because they've been looking for jobs for quite some time.